Hello folks, uh, welcome to uh, day one of the Tesla project. And what we're doing today is we are having a look at some of the low voltage wiring uh, for the drive unit. So aim of the game is, um, I've got this kind of wiring loom here from the car. And what I want to do is I want to strip it out and only have the connections uh, that I need because there's a lot of other car type stuff going on here. So the two that we know we need is the 23 pin amp seal, uh, this guy here which does all of the connections, um, signaling connections and so on to the inverter. And there's another one hiding down the far side, is this little four way guy which connects to the encoder um, on the far side of the drive unit, or I should say on the motor side of the drive unit. So I got myself a sharp knife and a bit of um, patience, and I'm going to start stripping this guy out uh, until we get rid of the wiring that we don't need. Um, the plug's got a bit of damage on it, not a big deal, I've got a few of these lying around, so... I can replace this if we find that we need to. Um, so that's part one. Uh, part two then, we're going to put some 12 volt power to this thing and see if we can wake it up and see if it actually transmits any uh, CAN messages. I'm pretty sure that even on its own, it will transmit um, some CAN messages uh, when we get power to it. So at least that would tell me that the logic board in here is what is uh, working and um, is kind of, uh, you know, at least we've got that part of it powered up. So, um, what I've tried to do is I've tried to work out a wiring diagram or a pinout, I should say, for this plug. Because what I did was I jumped on eBay and I got a um, Tesla Model S kind of service manual um, wiring diagram uh, package. Um, they're, you know, re readily available on there now, fortunately. Um, but like most automotive wiring diagrams, nothing's ever 100% clear and uh, Tesla is no exception, it seems. So what they do is uh, the actual plug, this plug here, is designated X250 in the wiring diagrams. And there's about a half a dozen pages where we see what certain wires do and what certain pins do. Uh, so I've been kind of scouting around the various parts of that electrical wiring manual, and I've been trying to make a list here of what um, all of the pins do. And uh, what I'll do then is I will make a pin out, uh, I well, uh, once I confirm as much as I can I will make a little pinout page for this thing and uh, we'll get that available to you guys because I haven't seen um, anything like that available. I uh, just, just want to point out as we're getting started here that um, the, the overall aim of this project with the drive unit is not really to be the first of that. I know I'm not the first. I have no, um, I have no illusions or concerns about that. Um, but while there are solutions to run this drive unit available from uh, particular entities, um, there is very little public domain info um, about this unit um about how to run it so what my aim is here really is to um there'll be there'll be kind of a dual track approach here the first thing i'm going to try to do and i'd say i've probably got maybe a 20 percent chance of making this work is i'm going to try to run it with a can capture uh, from a friend's car um so we're going to get it powered up here by its, its self and see what can IDs that it transmits out. Hopefully it will transmit out some. Um, eliminate those IDs from a complete powertrain can 
capture and then play them back to this thing uh, with the necessary analog signals in place and see if it's going to spin. Now, as I say, there's very little public domain information available, um, but there is one document uh, released by Jason Hughes uh, that's quite useful that lists quite a few of the, the, the CAN IDs on the powertrain uh, CAN bus and what they actually mean and you know how to interpret them. So that I will be using to see if I'm in the ballpark because for example, I remember I was looking at it there last night, like there's one, there's one message that tells you uh, whether the inverter is in a fault state or when it's in drive, uh, reverse, park, all that kind of thing. So that way at least I should be able to interpret some of the messages coming back and see if it's even trying to um, to go into um, operational mode. Um, if not, if that, if, if that particular track fails, and as I say, it probably will, uh, my plan then will be to reverse engineer the logic board and to design a replacement logic board uh, for the inverter that will utilize the Tesla um, power stage and the Tesla drivers. Um, the, um, you know sensors and so and so forth, uh, but have a board um, that we know how to control to be probably based on the Hubner inverter, and basically anything that I do on that will be 100% open open source. Um, so that's where we are, guys. So I'm gonna stop talking, grab that knife, and start cutting into this wiring harness. And we'll come back then uh, when we've a bit more done, and we'll see where we're at. Stay with us. All righty, so the first thing that I've observed here, uh, we've got our wiring harness stripped out. We've got all that crap taken out of it. And that mess over there connects to our inverter harness only with these two wires. There's a red and a, and a white red that go to this gray plug. According to my little diagram there, that's actually the CAN bus or CAN in. So this here then, uh, if I chop this, I chop what's off that plug, we can get rid of all that crap. And this leaves us, uh, let me get rid of all this. Just add it to the pile of OEM wiring harnesses that I'm tearing up at the minute. Uh, this is our inverter harness. We have our main plug on the inverter there. We have our encoder uh, connector here. And we've got this plug, which is unfortunately crushed, which is obviously where most of the signals uh, connect to the inverter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that plug off. It's pretty much scrap and um, see if we can identify out uh, what these wires do and see if we can connect up the CAN bus and get some 12 volt power to this thing. Okay, so here's the situation. I've got the inverter plug in. I have the CAN bus connected to an Arduino Dewey. I have what I believe to be the ground and the permanent 12 volt feed hooked to the power supply. Um, I've got Savvy Can running on the laptop, connect, connect it up. Uh, so I'm going to hit the power switch. This is the first time I've done it. No digital special effects here, so this could end badly. Okay. It didn't blow up. That's a good start. That's only the permanent 12 volt feed. So you wouldn't really expect that to do much. So now we've got the ignition on. Okay, we're drawing power. Oh crap, whoa. Okay, we have a lot of CAN messages. Holy crap. 
So right now we're pumping out about 400 frames per second. I don't know if this will come out. And there's a lot of IDs here, guys. Um, wow. The inverter's powered up. Wow, yay me again. <laughs> That's a lot of IDs on that, just for the inverter. Um, okay then. Guess I'd better suspend capturing before we flood ourselves. Okay, so we're powered up. Um, the CAN bus works. I left the encoder plug disconnected um, just to be sure, just in case I was doing something wrong. But we've got about a half an amp of draw there um, at about 13 and a half volts. And we've, uh, okay, step one, we've powered the thing up and it's, uh, it's sending CAN me messages. Woohoo! Sorry for the dirty tum I've been working on my cars. Sorry about that. <clears throat>